Welcome back to Data to Decisions. In one of the recent videos, we created a filled map, like what you see on screen here, for the United States of America, the data by states. And we use the labor force data or unemployment rate in that video. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through another method to create filled maps. So what you see on screen is a gradient fill. So for example, I right click and do format series and I can um, change the colors, but I'm limited in terms of how I can color the map. What if I wanted to combine the states which have similar range of values into a same color and I can have four or five colors and I can say, I want all the states which have values between 1 million to 5 million to be in a red color and 5 million to 10 million in a green color. So how can I control that by state by state in terms of categories? That's what I'm going to explain in this video. Now let's get started. Now that's what I'm going to do in this video. So we're going to create a map that is something like this, where you have the states colored by categories and we have used five categories in this example. So let's go and get this map created step by step. So here we are, we have the raw data in a new workbook with the state and then the measure value. In this case, it's the civilian labor force in November. And what I first did was to create this into a table. So if your raw data is in, not in a table format, make sure that you select and then do control plus D to convert it into a table and give a little name, which you can easily refer to. So I created and called uh, the table as data. And now for the more uh, critical part for this video is creating those categories for the maps. So as I said before, I wanted to do, in this case, five categories. So what are those? Um, and it's also called bins. So what I'm going to create is these bins of, let's say we start with um, 500,000, a million. So let's me put it in a number format. So it's a little bit easy to follow. Okay. So 1 million, then maybe the next one is 5 million. Then I will have 10 million. And then that's it. So here are the five bins that I want to create, let's say. Now, the bins are the numeric values. They are in a sequential or an ascending order. And I would want a label to go with these bins and things will get more clear as we go to the next step. But for now, I just want to say this is, let's say I call it 500K. 500k to a million and then this um, get or the category is 1 million to 5 million and the next one is 5 million to 10 million and this one is greater than 10 million. So these are the five buckets or the bins that I want to create in our field map. So now that we have done with it, now we need to connect these bins to our data set. And that is the next step to write the first formula for us, create a column in our original table called label. And for each of the states, we want to assign them a label based on this bin hierarchy. Right? So I'm going to use a function called xmatch, and I'm going to use look up the value of this Alabama, so 2 million or 2.3 million. I'm going to go and find it in our list of bins. So I'm selecting all these cells where we wrote the bins. I'm going to press F4 to lock this reference because. This is the same set of bins for all the states. So I'm going to lock them, then do a comma. I'm going to do a um, exact match or next larger item. You do not want to do an exact match because we are trying to find where Alabama's labor force 2.318 fits within one of our bins or the ranges. So I'm going to do one, which is exact match or next larger item, comma. And I'm going to search from first to last. Close parenthesis, hit OK, hit Enter. And this will give you the label. Um, so th this is still not the label. It gives you the position of the pins, right? So where is Alabama? It says third position within the list of pins. So if I go one, two, three, this is where Alabama uh, fits. Uh, and then Arkansas, let's say, for example, is 1.39, and uh, it is fitting in the third bucket, which is 1 to, three, 1 to 5 million again. Let's look at this one. So Delaware is 510,000, and this would fit in the second position of the bin. So this is it. I would like to have 
the label get displayed instead of the position. So the match function only gives you the position. We want the label associated with that position. So I do an index function at the beginning, select all the labels, press F4 to lock the reference, comma, and then X match is remaining the same. And then I go to the end and then close parenthesis, hit enter. Now I get the label. So exactly Alabama, 1 million to 5 million. Florida is greater than 10 million. Massachusetts, 1 million to 5. New Hampshire, 500K to 1 million. So everything looks right to me. Now it's time to go and build the map. So I'm going to click on anywhere outside the table. And then I'm going to hit insert. And this time I'm going to create a filled map. And Excel will say, make sure you give some data for the map because right now we don't have any data. So right click, select data, and hit um, the edit, the series. You can give a name for the series. I'm going to select the, my column name. Uh, importantly, select the values of the series uh, uh, from the labels column. So I clicked on the column C. Uh, I, so this is something that always uh, catches me off guard because um, whenever you are selecting values, make sure that the series values are fully empty before uh, you select because by default it assigns something which always gives you an error when you uh, hit enter. So make sure that you've selected C2 to C53 in this case, because that is where my labels start and end. Um, the important step here compared to the previous videos is that we want to select color by secondary category names. We don't want to select the default numeric values, which will give us a gradient fill. Um, so I've selected the other option, hit OK. And now I can give the labels, um, which is the state. So I select everything, uh, A2 to A53. OK, hit OK, and now we have a map. So this map gets us closer to where we want to. There's one thing, so I'm going to right click Format Legend, uh, move the legend to the top, uh, and that's fine. Now we can put a title. Um, so I'm not going to focus on those formatting things. The focus here is how do we get the, uh, the category fill working. And so the one thing I notice is that the sequence of the legend uh, here, 1 million to 5 million, and then it goes to 500k, and then it goes to 10 million. Then So it's clearly not in any order, right? So the, the fact is, because the labels that we have here, the first state has 1 million to 5 million. That's why you see that first. And then the less than equal to 500k is the second, and that's why you see here. And then as I go here, the new value is greater than 10 million, and I get that here. So the fact that the this the legend is ordered based on the order of your source data. I would prefer it to be in, a, uh, in an ascending order. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to the labor force table and then I'm going to sort from smallest to largest and watch out for the map as it changes. Um, so 1 million to 5 million red is the first one on the map right now. But as soon as I do this, you will see the less than or equal to 500k becomes the first one and that's where. So I have not found a way to control uh, each um, you know color separately uh, in the settings. So one, one thing I found out was that the order of the appearance of these labels in the raw data, the source data, is what dictates this sequence of the order. Um, so we could do this. Uh, this works fine. If you want a more dynamic solution, for example, if the data changes. So tomorrow, let's say Wyoming is not really the uh, the least in terms of labor force and it changes, you will have to come and hit the sort button again, right, uh, in order to make this uh, in a sequence. So in such cases, if you want this to be more dynamic, we will have to create formulas to take the raw data, put it into another dynamic table here using formulas, and then build the map based on that data. Uh, right now, we are building the map directly based on the original source data. And so you would have to go into sort uh, menu option uh, to make sure that if your data changes, you reorder it. But again, let me know uh, how you handle the situation in your work. Uh, are there other methods that you would recommend to create filled map with categories? Uh, in the past, many, many, many years ago, I've created these type of templates uh, uh, from scratch, I built a US map and then colored the states uh, where I can control every single state's uh, 
uh, individually if I wanted to, and I can also do dynamically, uh, you know, ranges of bins like this. And I've created some templates on our uh, the website in Zara.com. Uh, but these maps are a lot easier to create, but they just don't give uh, more control that I would like to see, but maybe this will change in the future. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any suggestions, please put them in the comments. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. I'll see you soon in another video.